Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Did you know that mead could taste like fresh fruit, warm spices, or floral honey tea? Today we're breaking down how to evaluate its aroma, taste, and mouthfeel, step by step. In this video, we'll dive into the essentials of evaluating mead. We'll cover examining aromatics, assessing appearance, tasting flavor, evaluating mouthfeel. But before we get started, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more mead making tips and techniques. And as a thank you for joining me, grab my free ebook, Mead Making at Home Easily, using the link in the description or the pinned comment below. It's packed with troubleshooting tips and advanced techniques to take your mead making skills to the next level. Evaluation is a structured approach to understanding the quality and characteristics of a product. For mead, evaluations involve capturing sensory impressions and sometimes comparing them to style guidelines in formal judging. But for home tastings, it's really about enjoying the sensory experience. Here's the framework of a well-rounded mead evaluation and why each component matters. Each element we evaluate, aroma, appearance, flavor, and mouthfeel, gives us insight into the mead's quality, balance, and craftsmanship. By understanding these components, you'll be able to recognize the traits of a well-made mead, spot any potential faults, and fully appreciate the complexity of each glass. For a complete sensory assessment, we evaluate mead based on appearance, aromatics, flavor, mouthfeel, and overall impression. Together, they build a picture of the mead's quality and style. So let's begin with mead aromatics. Aroma versus bouquet. In mead, aroma refers to the raw scent of honey, while bouquet encompasses the full aromatic profile, including effects from fermentation and aging. And here's how to evaluate both. First, prepare the glass. I generally use a tulip-shaped wine glass to concentrate aromas and pour a small amount, about two to three ounces, for swirling space. I swirl the glass, Swirling releases the aromatic compound, bringing the scents to life. Inhale from different positions. Capture specific scent layers by positioning your nose at different levels around the glass. Directly over the glass, place your nose close to the surface and inhale deeply. This reveals the honey's core aroma, its floral, herbal, or fruity qualities. Higher above the glass, move about one to two inches above the rim to capture the bouquet, a blend of honey, fermentation, and aging notes. Here you may pick up mild alcohol, fruity esters, or spices. Around the rim, sniff gently around the rim to pick up subtleties like delicate floral or fruity notes. Outside the glass, hold the glass about three to four inches away for a balanced impression of aroma and bouquet. Identifying and note aromatic quality. Honey character. Assess intensity, sweetness, and specific qualities like floral or fruity. Try to specify varietal characteristics. The fermentation character. Look for yeast influence or byproducts. Watch for faults like acetaldehyde, which is like green apple, diacetyl, which is like butter, butterscotch, or sulfur. Special ingredients and balance. If there are any additional ingredients, see if they harmonize with the honey. Certain processes like oaking add unique aromas, example like vanilla or intensified honey notes. And here's some common beginner mistakes to avoid. Avoid over swishing or swirling, which can disrupt delicate aromas. Swirl gently and use light, short inhales to capture subtle notes without overwhelming your senses. Now let's discuss meat appearance. Appearance sets the stage for taste, and here's what to evaluate. Color. Mead ranges from light gold to deep amber. Describe its hue and intensity and consider if it aligns with the mead style. Clarity. Brilliant clarity often signifies a well-crafted mead, though haziness may be acceptable in some fruit or spice meads. Legs. Swirl the mead and observe the legs or tears that form on the glass, indicating alcohol content and body. Carbonation, if applicable. If the mead is carbonated, assess the bubble size and the persistence. Small bubbles usually indicate high quality carbonation, while larger bubbles may suggest a less refined process. The next topic is mead flavor. The flavor of mead is a complex balance of honey, acidity, tannins, and alcohol. And here's how to evaluate it. First, the honey flavor. Identify strength and clarity. Is the honey distinct or muddled? Look for a floral, fruity, or spicy note. Now, sweetness. Sweetness levels vary from bone dry to highly sweet. Distinguish sweetness from fruitiness. Acidity and tannins. Acidity brightens while tannins add structure. Together, they balance the honey's richness and influence the body. And what everybody loves is the alcohol. Alcohol should feel warm and not harsh. 
Hotter solvent-like aromas could indicate fermentation flaws, special ingredients, and overall balance. Any added flavors such as fruits, spices, wood, etc. should enhance the mead without overpowering it. Consider how well ingredients harmonize and assess any processes like oaking or ice concentration that introduce unique flavors. Aftertaste. Describe the lingering taste. Is it short and fleeting or long and memorable? Note the lingering sweetness, acidity, or any distinctive qualities. And organizing flavors. You can use a flavor wheel. A flavor wheel organizes descriptors into categories, making it easier to build a detailed description of the mead. Here are some examples. Honey character. Floral, herbal, fruity, spicy, nutty, earthy. Fermentation characters might include alcohol, esters, phenolics, yeasty, and aged notes. Acidity and sweetness characters. Honey, caramel, tart, citrus, and crisp. Tannin body characters. Tea, black tea, light, medium, full body. Special ingredients. Fruits, spices, and herbal additions. Woody or oaked. Faults, such as oxidation, acetaldehyde, which is green apples, sulfur, diacetyl, which is butter, fusel alcohol, which is hot, heat, solventy. Using these categories can help you identify positive or negative characteristics in the mead flavor. So now we'll discuss mouthfeel in the mead. Mouthfeel refers to texture and tactile sensations. And here's what to observe. Body. The body can be light, medium, or full, often correlating with sweetness and alcohol. Carbonation. For carbonated meads, Assess if it's petulant, which is lightly sparkling or fully sparkling. High carbonation is effervescent, while too much can feel bubbly. Alcohol heat. A warming sensation is positive. Harshness is a flaw. Tannins. Tannins can be smooth or astringent, affecting dryness and structure. Finally, here are some of my final thoughts on evaluation. Evaluating meat is both an art and a science. When judging, set aside personal biases like preference for sweet or dry meads, and focus on drinkability and balance. Great meads have complex layers and are not one-dimensional. Encourage experimentation. Tasting is personal, and everyone's palate is unique. Experiment. Trust your senses. Don't hesitate to add your own insights. Everyone's experience with mead is different. If you've tried any of these steps, share your experience in the comments below. I'd love to hear your tasting notes or answer any of your questions. And if you're interested in more tips, check out my other mead making videos over here. Thanks for tuning in, and now let's put those skills to the test. Oh, and by the way, I'll include my lexicon, which is very much like the mead flavor wheel, but it's in a spreadsheet. Uh, I'll make it into a PDF file, and you can be able to download it from the link below. Happy mead making.